Tofino, British Columbia, let's start there because it is an absolutely magical place for people who have never been, maybe never heard of it. Describe Tofino mm -hmm. to me. Um, Tofino is definitely a very small surfing and fishing community. Everybody here loves going on adventures and loves being outside in nature. And we just, we draw a lot of really adventurous, fun people to Tofino that love being in the ocean and not in nature. Okay, so Tofino, would you equate Tofino with surfing in this country? Is it kind of the, the hub? I, I would think so, yeah. I think, I don't know, I think Tofino's getting known more and more for like the Canada surf community and it's a great little town to grow up in. Describe your journey there because you were actually born in Canmore, Alberta. So how did you and your family end up in BC? Uh, my mom, ever since I think she was like 20, would come to Tofino with her friends and spend the weekend surfing or weight surfing. And she always loved the mountains. She grew up in Edmonton. And we kind of like, I got born in Canmore, Alberta, and I grew up spending all winters there and snow snowboarding and skiing and adventuring around in the backcountry with my parents. But my family bought a house in Tofino when I was about half a year old. So my whole life, we would do summers out here. And I think when I was probably... Or when I was in grade two, we finally moved to Tofino full time. So when did you first get up on a surfboard? Um, even when I was like three, four, I'd spend like all summer boogie boarding and just swimming in the water. And I like my mom and dad would hop me on longboards every once in a while. But I started to like fully surf my own probably around eight. I want to know what you feel when you connect with the ocean, when you get on a surfboard. Um, what speaks to you? I think, well, for me, I've always just been drawn to the ocean and getting to be like growing up in the field, you paddle out and there's days you can be out all alone. And when you're out there, just looking around and you just feel calm and at peace with yourself and happy and you're doing what you love with the people you love. And there's no other way, like no other way I'd rather spend my day. And then I think for me now, like, I don't know, just the feeling you get riding a wave and even now there's times I go back and I'll just go down the lane, line straight and do no turns or anything. And just that little feeling of going fast and flying is one of my feel favorite feelings in the world. And I love it. Cause most of us, we have sort of our, our work and then we have the things we do when we're done work, but is surfing the thing you want to do all the time? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it's definitely healthy to take little breaks and then it, you find like you get more driven to do it and like you, I don't know, like if you take like a week off, you're like, you just want to surf so much more and just taking those little breaks, I think is really healthy. So when did you start to realize that you were really good at surfing? I, I don't really know. I don't think I fully like think I'm really good yet. Like <laughs> I still look at like everyone who inspires me and I realize how much further there is I want to go. And I don't know, I think just, like going and traveling, competing and being like, for me, I'm like, oh, I'm a little girl from Canada and I'm surfing against people I've looked at my whole life. And then just starting to like beat them in comms and like travel around and doing better in different comms, I think made me realize that I can actually do this as a living and like competitively and yeah. So when did you enter your first competition? How old were you? I think I was probably 10 and I did Queen of the Peak here in Tofino. Okay. So 10 years old, I have a 10 year old daughter, so I can't, I honestly can't even imagine her doing something like that. Yeah. Do you remember that? Like, do you remember how you were and do you remember um, feeling the rush of competition at that age? I, I do. I, I think, well, I, I think the comp I did when I was 10, my first comp, I remember the ways being huge. And I was the like only girl who paddled past the break. And I remember I was allowed to bring like my adult friend who could paddle out with me so I wouldn't have to be out there all alone. And we like were paddling out and it was huge. And I remember being terrified. I didn't want to go out. And I was paddled out and I felt so many nerves. And we ended up, I was like, we made it past the break and we seen dolphins. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to have fun after I see the dolphins. But I ended up getting like two amazing bones. And I think just that adrenaline with the waves being big and competing for the first time got me hooked and I love it. I want to tell you about a couple of things that your mom said about you. Uh, she said you're deep and sensitive. Would you agree with that? Yeah, 
I definitely can be really sensitive, but I think as a person, I definitely love, I don't know, just being deep and being real and yeah. But she also says you're a force of power. What do you think she means by that? I don't know. I like, once I kind of have my mind on something, I'm going to like practically get it. And I don't know. I feel like if I was a mom, I'd be kind of hard to parent because I'm so independent and driven, but yeah. What does a, an average day look like for you? I mean, obviously now everything is, is different because of the pandemic and you're not traveling mm -hmm. like you would be, but um, you know, how do you balance school? How much time do you spend in the water? What's your day like? Um, well, every day I definitely put time in school, time like doing a warm up in our gym, surfing. I have a really good strength program. I work with an incredible trainer in Vancouver, Damien. Um, so just, I don't know, taking time to do school and training and getting to spend time with your family. Well, speaking of your family, your younger sister is also a competitive surfer. So um, what's your relationship like with her? I know you're her role model, but you're also starting to compete against one another. I think, well, there's no way I'd be at the level I'm at today without her. I think mm -hmm. growing up, we got to go surf every day together and we kind of started to travel a lot together. And even now, like she's beaten me so many times and I definitely like don't like it, but it drives me and pushes me and having like, I don't know, just having somebody you get to travel around with and pushes you every day out in the water has been so healthy and me, like me and my sister are both very competitive and we love competing with each other, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter like who wins and yeah. So it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> if you beat her, it's okay. If she beats you, yeah. it's okay. You support it's one hard. another. <laughs> oh, definitely. Okay. So let's, let's get to the, the serious stuff. Um, the Pan Am surf games in 2017, the first Canadian to medal in international surf competition. Mm -hmm. How did that make you feel? And like, it was funny because during the actual event, I wasn't like, well, it's kind of like three days before we had like the, or like the final or the day you'd like figure out what place you got, you're like guaranteed a medal. So I'm like, okay, I'm guaranteed a medal. And I really wanted to like, I don't know. I wanted to get like, of course I wanted to win, but then getting bronze kind of that day, I felt kind of bummed because I definitely didn't perform as well as I wanted to. But now looking back on like all that was amazing and getting to like go to the Pan Am games and meet everybody and being like my first multi-sport competition was unreal and getting to be there with all the team Canada was an experience I'll have for life. Explain this to us though because you actually you won a gold in longboard which is not your main event right? Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong and then so the bronze was in shortboard so um, for those of us who don't understand surfing at all the the difference is the length of the board what else? Um, definitely the length of board and I don't know for short boards it's more about doing radical maneuvers and critical turns and long boarding you do like little carvey turns but it's all about footwork on a board and yeah it's like I don't know two like very different types of surfing but yet you're still doing the same thing. I'm curious about the kind of spectrum of competition because I know that there are surfers who are in their teens like you who are at the top of the, their game. Mm -hmm. There are also surfers who are in their 30s who are still at the top of their game. So you are out there competing against, you know, sort of people decades older than you. Um, what's that like? That's got to be an interesting experience. Um, I, I love it. Like getting to go compete at like Worlds where you literally surf and use your at idols and they can be much older than you but they just push you and you get to be out in the water watching like their every move and like just watching the person they are on land and in the water like getting to compete with all ages definitely is motivating and inspiring and you get to learn so much and I think that's something that like makes surfing so unique is you get to surf with so many different like categories and styles and there's so many different like aspects of surfing that yeah so 2019, you go to the Pan Am Games, you win a bronze medal. Um, that's got to feel unbelievable for you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, so what then did you miss now with the pandemic? Like what was supposed to roll out? How was this all supposed to happen? And then I guess what's been put on hold? Mm -hmm. So I think May 9th to like 20th, we had our qualifier and it was in El Salvador. And that has been canceled and I'm not sure when they're planning on running, but 
that would have been my qualifier for the Olympics. So for like the past year, that's kind of what I've been training for. If you can allow yourself to imagine that you get to Tokyo, uh, let's say it's 2021, um, what would that mean to you? And you'd still only be 18 years old. Um, I think it's just like when you train for something for like a year or two and you wake up every morning and like you go work in the gym and you train out in the water and like work on your surfing so much and you see so much improvement over the last two years and just achieving those goals along the way feels so good. And I mean, getting to be in the Olympics is like a dream for many athletes. So I think, yeah, it would be a dream country for me. Nobody gets to where you are alone. We talked about your sister and the role that she's played along your side. Um, who else, when you think about who's, who has mentored you, who has been a role model, who's helped you along the way? Definitely my family. Like my mom and my sister have been there every step of the way. And even my grandparents, they're literally my biggest fans and they'll come travel and they're like, go travel anywhere around the world to come and cheer me on on the beach. But like I've probably said this many times, but growing up in Tofino, the like my biggest inspiration has been Pete DeVries. And I think, I don't know, just watching him has made me the surfer I am today and getting to like be out on the water talking to him and learning from him has been like huge to becoming the surfer I am today. And then I've had this coach in Hawaii named Russell and I've literally worked with him since I've been 10. And he is kind of like a grandpa, like another grandpa for me now, but he like, he knows me so well and he's taught me so much about the mental game and just little parts of surfing that make me love it so much. Now you're a role model. So does that, are you comfortable being a role model? Like, do you, do you like that title? Oh, um, I love it. I mean, like even growing up, my mom's like, oh, like, what do you want to be when you get older? I'm like, oh, I just want to inspire people. And I think being able to inspire people and just like work on being the best person you can be. And like, I think leading by example, because I've looked up to so many incredible people and just, I don't know, being able to just inspire the next generation is huge for me. And it inspires me too, like watching all the young, like the next generation coming up. Do you get emails or messages from, from younger people? Yeah, definitely. And like all those little things make my day. I love it. I'm going to leave you with a question that we're asking everybody to uh, leave us with advice that they would give their younger selves. Now I'm going to flip this around for your purposes here today. So I'm going to ask you what lessons have you learned so far in your life that you want to make sure you remember later on as you get older? I think, well, even like I'm still young, but I'm just realizing how quickly life like goes by. And I can't believe that in like almost a year, I'll be 18. And that seems like crazy for me, even though it's still really young. And just to really enjoy like every little moment and spend time with your family and loved ones. And just, I don't know, do every like do everything that you love and put a hundred percent into it because you're never going to have that time back. Matea, you are wise beyond your years. I can see why your mom called you deep sensitive and a force of power. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, it's been great. Thank you. So Faye, here we are with a team of producers and the cameras. Are you used to this at this point? Um, sometimes. I mean, I mean, a little bit. A little bit? How long has it been, do you think, since you started to get a little bit well-known? What do you mean? Well, you, we see you on Twitter, we see you on Instagram, people know who you are, people know your name. Has that just been in the last little while? Uh, I don't really pay attention to it, so I don't really know. People are super excited about her. Um, they feel inspired. So it's anything that positive that we hear, we share with her. Uh, but she's unfazed, but she's not phased by it. Um, she's not concerned with, with any of the, the attention so much. She just wants to skate. I want to hear about your journey and how you got on a skateboard to begin with, because I know your parents aren't skaters. So how did it happen for you? Well, my dad was like scrolling through something and then 
all of a sudden it was like this group lesson, Impact Skate Club. And we just went to the lesson and that was it. I just loved it ever since. And that was it. I mean, I've watched you. I've seen tons of videos. You're fearless. Have you always been that way? Well, you know, it's not like fearless. It's like, I'm like, not, it's like, I know what I want to do. And it's like, I just got to get it over it. I'm not like fearless. It's just for some people, it looks like it's bigger than it actually is to a skater. So tell me how you get up the courage to do some of the tricks that you do, some of the harder stuff. Well, you know, sometimes I just try go three, two, one, I'm gonna do this. Do you wanna do this or do you have to do this? Like, I like put like my mind, like you have to do this, you're fae. You have to do this, you're fae? Yeah. Do you have shirts that say that? You have to do this, your fae? That's awesome. Was, were you like that the minute you got on a, on a skateboard? No, because I didn't do as crazy stuff and I didn't have to push myself to do scary stuff. But like, I remember the second day I was skateboarding, I dropped into a ramp, a quarter pipe. And like, I was just, I was like, now looking back at it, I was like, come on fae, that's easy. And I'm just, and then, like at that moment, I was just super terrified. I slammed a few times, but you know, I just did it anyway because I was holding people's hands. What's the ultimate goal with skateboarding? Um, I want to go to the Olympics, um, or I want to be a pro skateboarder. So tell me about some of the competitions that you've been participating in, not just participating in, but winning lately. I've been part of Hoedown at the Hoof, which is like, skateboard, another thing, another bowl contest. I've been part, I've gone to Rio and Sao Paulo for um, Olympic qualifiers, and I've gone to a lot more. What about girls and women in the world of skateboarding? Are, do, you, do you see a lot of role models for yourself? I don't usually see a lot of women skateboarding. There's a couple, but like, you know, I'm usually the only girl at the skate park. Did that feel weird to you? Does that feel okay to you? It feels fine. I just get in there. I actually kind of like just seshing just with all the guys. It doesn't even matter. Like, anybody can hop in there. You know, it's, as long as, like, it's just, like, everybody loves skateboarding, so that means you're welcome. And people are totally nice to you. And yeah, everybody's matter, nice. Everybody's girl, boy, man, woman, whatever. That's awesome. Okay, so explain to me what's going on here. Um, there's a bowl, and then stuff for you to do street skating on. It's yeah, street course. Street course. Okay. So what would you consider your strength? What are you strongest at, or are you are you good at? I'm good at both. Okay, and if you get to the Olympics, when you get to the Olympics, what would you be competing in? Both. You'd be competing in both, okay. That's insane. So what's gonna happen now? Do you know if, if the Olympics happens in, in 2021? What's the process? How will you know if you qualify? What will be the next step? Well, you go to all these qualifiers in all these different countries, like, and then you, you compete there you place and then you have like a big leaderboard and it's like it's all like this weird system because like only 20 people get to make it and it's like it's like all this crazy stuff that's like super crazy i just got to worry about the skateboarding though and how much time do you wish you could spend on a skateboard all day and all night <laughs> I figured that might be your answer. Um, what tricks are you working on right now? Mm, I'm working on like getting some of uh, the grinds down, like a backsmith or back five O's because those are important. Because I have all the front side tricks, which is like going front side like that, but I don't have some of the backside tricks. And I'm working on having late grab backsiders. What would you say the skateboarding community is like? Because you're hanging out with adults and kids and it's all ages and all genders. What would you say it's like? Um, 
I would say it's like, it's like everybody's like super nice. We love the community. They're really inclusive. You get to know all the kids and adults of all ages that skate. Uh, spending a lot of time filming her, um, editing the clips I enjoy, um, and filming other kids, and it just becomes a part a part of our lives, which we love. You're turning 11 soon. What does Faye Ebert hope to accomplish by the age of 15? What do you see for yourself? I don't know. I haven't thought about that. Okay, what about by the age of 12? <laughs> I don't know, I kind of want to get like flat ground tricks down. I want to get like heel flips and varial flips. M maybe like a tray flip. What about an Olympic medal? Would that be cool too? Yeah. Okay, I think so. A huge thanks to Matea Olin and to Faye for letting us tag along here at the skate park at Ash Bridges Bay. I'll be watching to see what happens next for these young women, and I hope you do too. That does it for this episode of Top of Her Game. See you next week.